All right, so we got some locks coming up here. All right, Tyler, what, what is the, I went two and two last week. The Eagles have really bailed me out of my NFL picks because I've been dead on. We're both 3-0 and with our Eagles picks this year. Correct. So we're, we're betting against the spread. Same thing with the Eagles. We give you the, the Eagles final score, but we tell you whether or not and what we think about the spread. So let's start off with the Bengals at the Panthers, right? So whenever a coach gets fired or a, a major change is made, especially in the NFL, you normally see that bump the first game. Last year, you saw it with, actually with the Raiders when, when they made a coaching change. Uh, and that's what you saw last week with the Panthers and Andy Dalton. They came out, and they looked like a, a pretty good football team. Well, they're not. All right? The Bengals are desperate for a win at 0-3. And, and they've actually been better than their 0-3 record. They lost a very competitive game against Kansas City that they easily could have won. And they lost last week in a Monday night game to a dynamic offense, uh, uh, or at least a dynamic young quarterback in Jaden Daniels. So they're not losing this game. The Panthers stink. Take the Bengals minus four and a half on the road against the Carolina Panthers. All right, speaking of Jaden Daniels and the Commanders, they traveled to Arizona to take on the Cardinals this week. Arizona's offense has been pretty good. They struggled last week against the Lions, but Washington's coming off this emotional win against the Bengals on Monday Night Football. It's a short week, and now they got to travel cross-country to Arizona, and we've seen this with the Eagles. It's not an easy place to go east coast to Arizona and win. So I would take the Cardinals minus three and a half over the Commanders. The Commanders won last week. They're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Arizona's offense is kind of good. I don't like Washington's defense at all. Probably take the over. There's going to be some points scored in this game. But I'll take Arizona minus three and a half over the Washington Commanders. Maybe it's just me, but I came into the season with all everybody talking about the, oh, the Bears are going to make the playoffs. The Bears aren't, aren't really any good. And Caleb Williams, maybe he's going to develop into a good quarterback. I was not a big fan of him coming out of USC. Uh, he was going to be everybody's pick for the first overall pick. First overall pick. He's not going to be the best quarterback of this draft. But they're three-point favorites over the Rams at home. Why are the Bear, Bears three-point favorites over the Rams? Well, probably because the Rams are kind of banged up, and they're not very good. They're just not. And the Bears kind of need this one, and it's a three-point spread. That line is screaming, take the Chicago Bears to me. So I'll take the Bears minus three over the Los Angeles Rams. And the Eagles, um, I worry about Lane Johnson not playing. Uh, Fred Johnson came in and did a really good job in relief coming in for Lane Johnson. But if he has to start this week and teams are game planning to go after him, that's a problem. You don't have Devontae Smith. You don't have A.J. Brown. Teams are going to take away Dallas Goddard. I love Saquon Barkley. I'm not sure they have enough weapons to beat the Bucs on the road offensively. Tampa Bay's a good team. They had lost last week. So when you go, go the week-to-week -week thing in the NFL, when you have that bad loss, a lot of times teams respond. The Eagles did it last week against the Saints. To me, this feels like a Bucs response game. So I'm going to take the Bucs to actually win the game outright. 24-23, to a tight game, most likely an ugly game. But I think the Bucs prevail in this one, so I'll take Tampa Bay plus two. Uh, but I'll take them to win the game outright as well, Tyler Zuby. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll start with that one as well since we're on the topic. I'm also taking the Bucs to win this game. Uh, I think that this is – Zach brought up some, some good points. Like the uglier this game gets, I think the more it swings in the Eagles' favor. Uh, but looking at the, the injury reports is a big concern for, for both sides because both teams kind of come into this one a little bit banged up. But I think some of the guys that the um, – the Bucs are going to need, including some of their offensive linemen, are going to end up playing, whereas if Lane Johnson doesn't play, that's a concern. We know A.J. Brown's out. Uh, Devontae Smith, as, as Zach made mention, probably not going to play either. The uglier the game, the more this swings into the, the Eagles' favor. I worry about one guy, and I talked about this yesterday. Chris Godwin concerns me. I'm not sure. Like, Mike Evans on the outside. Mike Evans is going to get his. He always does. 1,000 yards for like 408 seasons in a row. He's going to get his. Chris Godwin is a guy that concerns me because I'm not sure they have the matchup capabilities of him in the slot versus any of the, the Eagles, you know, nickel, slot, you right. know, third defensive back type of guys, whoever it ends up being. They've done a good job so far. I think Chris Godwin is, is a, a danger problem for them. Uh, and then in the run game, they're going away from Rashad White and more and more and more to Bucky Irving. And I'm not sure when the Bucky Irving breakout game happens, but it's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, I believe. Uh, I, I think that... This is going to be a low-scoring game, so maybe it's a little bit uh, hypocritical of what I just said, but I am going to take the Bucs in this one. 
Uh, you said what, 24 23? Yep. Uh, I had 24 as well for the Bucks. So just for show continuity, I'll change it up a little bit. I'm going to go the Bucks win this one uh, 23 to 20. Yep. That's where I'll go. Uh, th- so for my picks of the week, we actually are going to go head to head for the second consecutive week because I like the hook in one of the games. Uh, I agree with you. It's difficult to travel east to west. I agree with you. I don't think Washington has the firepower defensively to slow the Cardinals down. I also agree with you. I think I would take the over in this game as well. With that being said, I'm taking the Washington Commanders plus three and a half. I don't think they win this game, but I think it's a a close game. And this is going to be one of those games. I do truly believe whoever has the ball last is going to win this football game. Um, that extra half a point is in, is uh, incentivizing, I think, for me. Right. I'm going to take Washington at three and a half. I'm going to take the Houston Texans minus six. Jacksonville is dangerously close to having their head coach fired and their quarterback ridiculed for poor play at this point. <laughs> uh, I, I At some point, you have to win a game. What concerns me about this is AFC South matchups are always slugfests. Uh, in this one particularly, though, I, I expect whoever is the starting running back uh, for the Houston Texans, whether it's Cam Akers, or uh, they, they mentioned about using Dari Gumbawale a little bit more. You might get Joe Mixon back. I expect wh- whoever it is to have a pretty productive game. I'm going to take the Texans minus six. And then on Monday Night Football, I like the... Uh, actually, uh, the, the hook scares me a little bit on this one, but I like the Lions in this. Seahawks come into this one 3-0. and Lions yeah. have had kind of a, a weird season so far, but I just think they're the better team at home in Detroit, Monday Night Football. I'm going to take the Lions minus four and a half. I love that pick. I do. I love that pick, and I agree with you. 